today we are going to start on the next uh, division under the plant kingdom that is your uh, bryophytes but before that few things which we uh, could not discuss in our last class regarding the classes of the algae that we will be first taking off okay and after that we will be taking on the bryophytes uh, in details now um, in the previous class as we have come to know that the plant kingdom is broadly classified into five divisions now uh, algae as it is called thallophyta bryophytes and pteridophytes these three are seedless plants so since they are seedless plants so they are sometimes togetherly grouped under cryptogamy cryptogamy means those plants which do not bear seeds flowerless plants and as a result since they don't have flowers so they don't bear seeds so then how do they reproduce they reproduce by means of you know vegetative propagation they reproduce by means of your um, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction leads to the formation of spores but not the seeds and regarding the gymnosperms and the angiosperms they are called as your phenerogams phenerogams means flowering plants that means they will be having seeds and uh, the seeds as in case of gymnosperms is naked and in case of angiosperms it is enclosed within the ovary so that is the various uh, you can say the divisions belonging to the plant kingdom algae we have come to know that algae is a organism which is multicellular chlorophyllous organisms and uh, depending upon the pigments the algae were of three different classes these were chlorophyce pheophyce and rhodophyce now chlorophyce we had come to know that they have just like the land plants the pigment chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b because of which they are the green in color and pheophyce these are called the brown algae the reason is because they have chlorophyll a and along with that they have the chlorophyll c in them and they have fucosanthin and they have the xanthophyll pigments and because of that combination they range from the olive green to that of the brown color so that's why they are called the pheophycian members belonging to algae or they are the brown algae and rhodophyce members are the red algae that means they have chlorophyll a and chlorophyll d and they have phycoerythrin phycocyanin and phycoerythrin because of that erythrin pigment and because of chlorophyll a and d they appear to be red or the shades of red uh, so that's why they are named as your red algae or rhodophycian member so this is basically depending upon the pigment the classification is made if you see in your ncrt there's a table in which the different uh, you know characteristics are taken into consideration for the classification of the algae members in case of chlorophyce the reserve food is starch if you go to pheophyce the reserve food is mannitol or laminarin and if you go to rhodophyce the reserve food is that of your floridian starch okay uh, so this is the various kinds of reserve food associated with it if you see the cell wall cell wall mostly are made up of that of your cellulose but if you go to pheophyce along with cellulose they have a gelatinous you know um, covering around their cell wall or the cell wall is rather made up of a gelatinous substance which is called algin now what is the function of this algin is that algin prevents the desiccation of this plant that means if these plants are exposed too much to you know the wind or uh, some dry conditions then easily the uh, organism or the plant body does not becomes dry so this uh, gelatin uh, which is uh, present in the cell wall of these organisms algin is important for them to survive in the harsh conditions and rhodophycian members they have the pectin along with that of the cellulose so that is the cell wall uh, you can say the difference between that of the various classes of that of the algae now regarding this chlorophycian member uh, we have to read i told you the economic importance of all the groups so chlorophycian members ranges from that of the unicellular organisms like chlamydomonas chlamydomonas has a flagellar so it can move there is some other unicellular organism also which belongs to chlorophycian member which is called as your chlorella i told you last day about it now the chlorella is unicellular but it is non motile okay so uh, there are filamentous algae in case of 
your chlorophycin member as we see in case of yolothrix or we see in case of spirogyra then the chloroplast which is associated with that of the chlorophycin member they are of different shapes sometimes they are ribbon shaped so in some cases they are cup shaped in uh, some uh, cases uh, they are discoid so differently shaped uh, the chloroplasts are found in case of the different members of chlorophycin then uh, there is colonial form of chlorophycin member also like wall walks wall walks is a colony assemblage of different cells in a common you know envelope or a colony so that is also a kind of you can say variation in case of the organisms belonging to that of the chlorophycin then some chlorophycin members um, are uh, somewhat you know go, uh, growing in the moist uh, soil like that of your cara so cara is a chlorophycin member where we can see some leaf like appendages growing on a stem like structure and it uh, is um, you can say a plant which can grow in the damp soil or in the moist soil so uh, basically these are freshwater organisms but some may grow uh, in a marine ecosystem also and some prefer to go in, grow in the moist soil conditions okay so these are the various uh, organisms belonging to chlorophyce and i told you the economic importance of chlorophyce chlorella is an important food supplement it uh, purifies the oxygen in the spacecraft then chlorellin one antibiotics is obtained from the class called chlorophyce uh, so um, these are the various kinds of you see economic importance of chlorophyce and member Regarding the Phaeophycin member, the plant body, if you see in case of Phaeophyce, it appears to be you know a little bit um, much more advanced compared to that of the Chlorophycin member. They have a leaf-like frond, okay, and they have a stipe or stem, and the stem or the stipe ends up into a root-like structure. But actually, it is not root-like structure. It is just to um, cling to that of any kind of substratum or rocks under the under the ocean because these are mostly marine so that is called a hole fast so that is the characteristic um, plant body feature of that of the phaeophycian member the reserve food material as i told you is uh, that of your uh, mannitol and laminarin the organism called kelp in case of your phaeophycian members are very uh, big and uh, as big as 100 meters under the ocean and they form the important delicacies that means they are used as food um, in uh, you know some country oriental especially they make food out of it and uh, of course they are also used as fodder for the domestic animals so uh, that is about the phaeophyce and as i told you that the cell wall is uh, also provided with that of algin which prevents desiccation of this uh, organisms so uh, that's all about your uh, phaeophycian member some of the phaeophycian member like that of your fucus fucus is also a kind of phaeophycian algae which is growing under the ocean and it is also too long and it is provided with that of air bladders now when they are provided with that of the air bladders they can easily float uh, and uh, their uh, fronds or the leaves rather it's not a leaf we call it as frond it is serrated so as a result the water can easily pass through it without you know um, uh, just making it um, fragmented these organisms reproduce by means of vegetative propagation by means of fragmentation sometimes these organisms also reproduce asexually by means of zoospores now these zoospores are produced inside the zoosporangium and the zoospores are pear shaped now what is this pear shaped is that the pear shape means like this the shape is like this and they have two unequal uh, flagella one is whiplash type which is very long and another one is tinsel type now what is this tinsel type tinsel type will have hairy projections on its body so that is the kind of two types of you know flagella associated with that of the zoospores and the plant body is gametophytic so when the zoospores will be you know settled down into a suitable substratum they will be uh, uh, representing or they will be growing into the gametophytic plant body either the male uh, plant body or the female plant body and then sexual reproduction of course since it is in uh, growing in watery media so water assists in the movement of the that is the anthrozoids and uh, when they uh, move the ugonia uh, towards ugonia uh, they can fertilize with each other resulting into the formation of the zygote so sexual reproduction in case of the phaeophycian member is 
isogamous type, an isogamous type, and oogamous type. So, all the three types of sexual reproduction is found in them. The rhodophycian member, uh, the pigment in them is of course chlorophyll A and chlorophyll D and along with that I told you they have the phycoerythrin pigment because of which they appear to be red in color. Now the rhodophycian member, one of the best example of rhodophycian member is uh, that of your Irish moss. Okay, the, the scientific name of this Irish moss is known as Chondrus crispus. Okay, what is it called? It is called as your Chondrus crispus. C H O N D R U S. Chondrus and crispus. C R I S P U S. Okay, this is the scientific name of the Irish moss. Okay, now why it is um, the call as your Irish moss? because it appears to be somewhat looking like that of moss in uh, you know uh, f uh, external features but actually it is not a moss it is an algae and it is uh, a reddish in color and it gives a product which is called carrageenan now what is this product is that it helps in uh, making you know chocolate milk in uh, it does not uh, condenses the chocolate milk it helps in uh, doing that and sometimes in uh, certain um, food items like that in the preparation of soup the uh, one more red algae is this pori porphyra now porphyra is uh, figure is given in your book and this chondrus crispus also is used in making up of soup so uh, generally the food uh, various kinds of food items are provided um, uh, are provided with that of certain members of the rhodophycian algae and uh, besides uh, there is a substance which is called agar now this agar is a kind of powder form of uh, two uh, types of algae red algae gelidium and gracilaria now gelidium and gracilaria when they are dried and they are powdered then as a result of it what happens is that this can be used for growing up of microorganisms in the laboratory so that is the economic importance of this algae and uh, since uh, the they add a kind of cream texture even the algin present in the pheophysian member that also is used in making of puddings like we are making puddings as sweet delicacy it is so in that we are adding either egg or some other you know flour to make it uh, somewhat semi solid in nature so if we add a certain uh, the powdered form of this uh, gracilaria or that of that of your gelidium or that of uh, the members of the pheophysian member which are edible then it leads to uh, making up of cream texture of the ice creams or the puddings uh, sometimes they are even used in the toothpaste because it's cream toothpaste is cream like so to make it cream like texture again this gelidium extracts or the gracilary extracts are utilized they are utilized in making cosmetics okay so some kind of ointments so that is also the utility of this um, organisms belonging to both pheophysi and that of the rhodophysi so that is the economic importance of all the classes of um, the algae that is the thallophyta next we will move on to bryophytes now bryophytes are called the amphibians of plant kingdom this you have come across in your class 9 also now why they are called the amphibians of uh, plant kingdom see unlike uh, this um, algae members which are totally aquatic these uh, bryophytes are the one which are semi aquatic that means although they are uh, growing on lands but uh, they need water for the process of fertilization so since they need water for the gametes for uh, you know completing their life cycle so that's the reason why they are called the amphibians of plant kingdom means growing on land but they need water to complete certain a part of their life cycle and the plant body is gametophytic okay they have a separate gametophyte male gametophytic plant body and uh, female gametophytic plant body as in case of your bryophytes here also uh, the gametophytic plant body it is and sporophyte is only restricted to the formation of zygote which after taking rest undergoes meiosis to form the spores which are liberated again when they are liberated they will be producing the gametophytic plant body so uh, alternation of generation as we have discussed in the previous chapter that means we, uh, the alternating forms of two uh, forms of life that is gametophytic uh, plant body and sporophytic plant body so if we compare if we consider the algae in case of algae it is the haplontic type of alternation of generation that means the majority part of the life cycle is you know 
occupied by that of the gametophytic plant body and sporophyte is only restricted to the formation of the zygote. In case of bryophytes also uh, haplontic uh, life cycle is seen but uh, we sometimes call these bryophytes and the teratophytes to be showing you know haplodiplontic type. Why haplodiplontic type? The reason is because they have the hapl uh, haplontic plant body, gametophytic plant body both male and the female and the sporophyte uh, is also taking some part means uh, unlike the algae in which the sporophyte was only the zygote and then soon after that they under uh, went that uh, process of meiosis to produce the uh, spores but here the sporophyte uh, is uh, quite you know elaborate in case of especially the mosses and it is uh, dependent upon the gametophyte although but uh, since it is present it is uh, uh, taking certain span of the life cycle of this organism so we call this type of alternation of generation to be haplodiplontic type of alternation of generation okay so that's the reason uh, why uh, i when i begin with that why i said that these organisms are amphibians of the plant kingdom that was because they need water for the process of fertilization now Bryophytes, economic importance of bryophytes if you consider, the bryophytes do not have that much economic importance compared to that of the other plant groups. But yes, they are also economically important in the sense that um, the bryophytes uh, forms an important part in ecological succession. That means if there is a barren land or if a newly formed uh, land is created, you know, island is created in a ocean or in any uh, in any new place because of volcanic eruptions when the lava cools down it solidifies to transform itself into you know solid rocks and all the first plant to grow over there is of course the bryophytes okay so since uh, lichens as well as the bryophytes so since lichens and bryophytes are the starting plant material so the plant succession plant succession means first which type of plant is going to come then it will be replaced by which group of plants it, it will be and finally there will be a climax vegetation climax vegetation means which, which is the ultimate vegetation for that particular area so that is called the climax vegetation now this climax vegetation is not reached in one day isn't it so it has to follow step by step process so lichens as well as the bryophytes are the initiators of the plant succession in any kind of a newly formed land okay that is the economic importance of the bryophytes another very good economic importance of bryophytes is that there is an organism which belongs to of course mosses and that organism's name is called as your sphagnum okay what is it called it is called as your sphagnum It is called a sphagnum. Now, what is this sphagnum? It is a kind of moss, of course, and it uh, has a property of uh, absorbing moisture, atmospheric moisture within it, and it can um, uh, it can be used as a very good material, packing material for sending or for shipment of the live plant stock from one place to another place. Because in ship, you know, it takes a lot of time uh, because the distance is quite big and it takes several days for a substance to reach from one place to another place so if those things those live plant stalks are you know packed up using the sphagnum so the sphagnum can hold moisture for a long period of time so there is no need of regular watering of those live stalks so that is a very good economic importance of sphagnum another very good importance of sphagnum is that during the world war ii second world war the, there was a shortage of you know um, cotton for the dressing of the wounds so the stipe stipe means you can say here the stem so the stipe of the sphagnum plant had some you know fibrous or cottony substance which acted act as a very good absorbent so uh, that could be used in place of cotton as a gauge for uh, dressing up of the wounds then uh, sphagnum uh, when it is fossilized that means the primitive era sphagnum when it underwent the process of fossilization it resulted into the formation of a fuel the name of the fuel is called peat okay what is it called it is called as your peat so peat is a kind of fossil fuel obtained from sphagnum which uh, can um, be you know burnt like that of coal and so it is uh, 
a good economic importance of sphagnum belonging to the bryophytes okay so bryophytes further has been classified according to your syllabus into liverworts and mosses now liverworts why this na name has been given as your liverworts the reason is because you know when uh, primitively this plant was found by some taxonomist they thought that the plant body uh, it is um, somewhat you know ribbon like a thallus of course and at the bottom of this um, thallus like structure they had small fine hairy root like structures which were of course unicellular and um, they could absorb the water and uh, the shape of the thallus or the plant body appeared to be like that of the liver organ of the human beings so from there they gave this name as liver warts and they thought that um, you know since it is resembling the organ so maybe it has some therapeutic property uh, related to that of the liver ailment so from there it got the name liver warts but there is no significance that um, uh, treating the liver ailments with the liver warts will cure it it's not like that but in initially when it was found it appeared to be like that of a liver and uh, they thought that maybe some liver ailments could be cured by the extracts of this plant materials so that is why they named it as your liver words okay now this liver words the plant body as i told you is gametophytic they can reproduce vegetatively by the formation of a special cup like structure okay cup like structure on the thallus uh, which is called as your gimma cups now this gimma cups has some uh, gimma in it gimma are the propagules here you cannot say them as seeds propagules means which when vegetatively gets detached from this gimma cup and falls into again a suitable moist ground or shady ground because they need shade and moisture for their growth they can again give uh, rise to the gametophytic plant body so that is the organ of propagation vegetative uh, propagation in case of the liverworts a uh, best example of liverworts is your rickshia and marchensia okay in case of rickshia the reproductive um, organs that is the we call it as your anthridia and archegonia anthridia means the male uh, reproductive organ and archegonia means the female reproductive organ they are embedded inside the thallus the thallus is um, like this means it, it it's somewhat like this so it is uh, showing a dichotomous branching see the branching means he, from here the two heads are appearing so this kind of branching is known as your dichotomous branching so that is a characteristic features ribbon shaped uh, said so there is no uh, clear uh, stem formation leaf formation or root formation but in the ventral surface it's dorsi ventrally flat that means if you consider your hand to be a flat object the upper one is called the dorsal surface and the lower one is called the ventral surface so this also has a dorsal surface and a ventral surface so the ventral surface is having small fine root like structures or the rhizoids in case of the liver words so the plant body gametophytic plant body if it is a male uh, gametophytic plant body when it grows when it matures it develops into a structure the male reproductive structure in a branch so that branch is called as your anthridiophore and it is having an umbrella like structure at the top which is called as your anthridium and if you do a section of that anthridium we will find that it has fine uh, you know a flask shaped structure inside which they have those anthridia which can uh, be moving which uh, actually have flagella and with the help of water they can move towards the female um, gametophytic plant body having archegoniophore archegoniophore means the female reproductive or organ which is called archegonium is present in again in an umbrella but this time this umbrella is serrated okay the anthridium and archegonium how will you morphologically differentiate is that both of them look like that of an a stipe with that of an umbrella like structure but anthridiophore containing the anthridium the umbrella is intact okay there is no um, cutting or there is no serration we call it rather but archegoniophore containing the archegonium here the umbrella is serrated so uh, finger like serrations are present in case of archegonia they are present in an enclosed uh, jacketed structure and inside that uh, there are some neck cells okay so it's flask like structure somewhat like that okay somewhat like this okay and there are some jacketed cells okay jacketed cells and here there will be some it will be the flask will be lined by the cells
like this and at the bottom there will be the excel okay so uh, the uh, the entry anthridia will come and uh, it will be taken of course by the water and it will be reaching the um, egg at the bottom of this flask like structure and then the fertilization will take place as a result of fertilization it will uh, form the zygote the zygote after taking rest will multiply and it will be uh, dependent upon the gametophytic plant body it will have again three structure the foot foot which will be you know, embedded within the gametophyte that is a female gametophyte there will be a seta seta means like this there will be a stalk like structure and there will be a capsule okay and they are basically homosporous but of course uh, when they will be germinating again they will be germinating into a male gametophytic plant body and a female uh, gametophytic plant body okay so that is um, the various uh, you can say the stages in the life cycle of the liver words and the economic importance regarding the mosses they are a little bit advanced than that of the liver words in the sense that the plant body appears to be that of you know somewhat um, you can differentiate between the leaf like stem like and the root like structures so suppose if this is a plant body so you will find some uh, very fine uh, leaf like structures like this associated and then you will find some you know unicellular root like structures and uh, then there will be a capsule at the top which is the sporophyte and this is the you can see the lid of the capsule which when will be uh, dried up it will be released and inside this there will be the spores these spores will be liberated into the surroundings now this this part uh, of the plant body this part of the plant body is the sporophyte and this part of the plant body is the gametophyte so if this is suppose g and this is s so th this represents a gametophytic plant body which is leafy okay so leaf like structures they have and this is sporophytic plant body which is uh, of course dependent upon the gametophyte and it has a structure which is called foot which is inserted into the gametophyte this long uh, stalk like structure this is called the sita and this one is a capsule containing the spores okay so uh, these are the mosses and the mosses of course uh, the, uh, the economic importance the same like that of the liverworts they uh, form the initial members of a plant succession they bind the soil so they prevent soil erosion so that is also one of the economic importance of the moss and um, uh, that's it about this and vegetative propagation in case of uh, the mosses uh, also um, happens by means of a you see they have a uh, I forgot to tell you in case of liverworts also and in case of mosses they have a intermediate stage between that of the gametophyte and that of the sporophyte which is called as your protonema okay protonema is a thallus like structure see the mosses they show this kind of differentiation which was not found in case of liverworts because they were just thallus like so uh, what happens is that that the mosses have come from the liverworts how can you just you know justify or how can you just say that uh, these are uh, the members belonging to that of the bryophytes in the sense is that when the gametophytic plant body you know initially forms so initially it forms this kind of structure a thallus like structure in case of mosses also and we call it as your protonema stage and from this protonema secondary protonema comes and from that the gametophytic this leafy like structures with the rhizoids and all it uh, formation takes place and then of course the anthridium, anthridium and the archegonium which is surrounded by this leafy structure to protect them of course and finally when they get mature then uh, due to of course with the help of the water because water is a media for fertilization as a result of which the sporophyte or the zygote is formed which later develops into foot seta and capsule and it is dependent upon the gametophyte that means you can say somewhat it is parasitic because it is de deriving its nutrition from that of the uh, gametophytic plant body so uh, since it is um, um, here we can see the uh, independent gametophytic plant body and the sporophyte which is dependent upon the gametophytic plant body so if we think about the alternation of generation in case of the bryophytes it is 
haplodiplontic type. Why haplodiplontic? Because haploid phase is the dominant one, but the diploid phase is still existing, isn't it? It's not that it is just uh, rudimentary, just zygote up to zygote uh, that gamete will be uh, uniting, only zygote will be formed, and soon after the zygote, it will again undergo meiosis to form the haploid plant body, as we see, as we have seen in case of algae. It's not like that. It is a separate and a dominant, uh, not if not so dominant at least an elaborate phase of sporophyte is also seen in case of the both uh, the liverworts and the mosses which is uh, of course the members of the bryophyte so that's the reason why we call this alternation of generation to be the haplodiplontic type of alternation of generation diploid is represented by 2n and haploid is represented by n so um, the diagrams which are given at the last page of this chapter regarding the three types of alternation of generation those diagrams you have to practice it and along with that you have to write that which stage is n phase that is haploid phase and which one is the diploid phase that is the 2n phase and that is how at the bottom you are going to write that the this is the alternation of generation for the algae or alternation of generation for the bryophytes for the teratophytes for the gymnosperms and the angiosperms sporophytic plant body is the one which is the dominant phase and the gametophyte is only restricted to the formation of pollen and the restricted to the formation of the egg so since it is just that much stage which is dependent upon the sporophyte so we call that stage to be the diplontic type of alternation of generation okay so uh, that we will be of course taking up when we will be discussing about the gymnosperms so this is all about your bryophytes its economic importance and the various members belonging to bryophytes uh, i hope you have uh, understood it well next we will take upon the pteridophytes followed by the gymnosperms